If you want to speak from where you are, do so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I even state my position as regards this motion, it is important for me to express what the views of Kenyans are regarding this motion, and especially with a hindsight of the public participation that we did, and also from the public opinion which was communicated to Kenyans through an agency that conducts opinion polls. It is vitally important to remind Kenyans that through the public participation that we did on Friday and Saturday, it was overwhelming that Kenyans were in approval of the motion and therefore we must respect their position. We must also remind Kenyans that an agency by the name TIFA has come up with an opinion polling which again has indicated that Kenyans are in favor of the motion. Therefore, even as we debate today, even as we agonize over this motion, even as we consult the Honorable Wengi Mutuse, as we have done from time to time, as regards this motion, it is quite clear that Kenyans are in favor of the motion carrying the day. I therefore respect the position of Kenyans, I respect the position of my constituents of the Raqqa, and I do confirm that I rise to support the motion. That today, the motion that has been brought to this house to have His Excellency the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Rigathi Gachagwa, impeached, carries the day by a vote to be taken by the House. I must commend the Honorable Mwengi Mutuse, who is actually my Vice Chairperson in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, for work excellently done. And repeat the position he has made, that we are not a court of law trying a suspect. We are a House of Parliament which is required to just consider whether the grounds advanced are actually substantiated. Do we have reasons to believe that the grounds advanced are substantiated? Having listened to the mover, having looked at the documentation, and I confess we have burnt midnight oil looking at this particular motion and the supporting documentation, these grounds are substantiated. Allow me briefly to just mention but a few. Ground number one, which is on dangerous divisions in the country, is propagated by the Deputy President. The Deputy President last night admitted and tried to qualify the admission that he had likened Kenya to a company. There is total difference between likening the government to a company and stating categorically that the government is actually a company. The deputy president in the clips we have watched was candid in a statement to Kenyans that the government is actually a company and that each one of us has or does not have shares in that company. The net effect of this is, if you do not have shares, then you do not belong to Kenya. If you have shares, then you are more Kenyan than any other person who has lesser shares than you. This is the dangerous division which this house must frown against. And it must hold squarely against the deputy president. The second admission he made which is a very strong ground of this motion, is breach of collective responsibility. It has been clearly stated that the cabinet 
includes the deputy president. The president is the principal, the deputy president is the principal assistant of the president. Having breached this doctrine of collective responsibility, and he clearly said he did so because he thought, in his view, in his opinion, it was unconstitutional to have decided the way they decided. Clearly shows that the deputy president is not able to work with the government in which he is mandated to work with. To have actually failed to assist the president so that you speak contra to what the president says is itself is subordination as we have actually been told. The net effect is that even if the deputy president was actually to survive this impeachment motion, our question is, where would he work? He cannot work with the president because he made another admission that this motion actually has the nod of the president. We have not had any PG. We have had no meetings whatsoever regarding this motion, but he is convinced that the president has a hand in this motion. If that is the case and he survives, who will he work with? Who will be his boss? Number two, he says, whatever they do in the cabinet, thinkers on the unconstitutionality. If that is what his position is, that the cabinet as it sits today would actually make decisions, which decisions they would have to execute at one time or the other, which are unconstitutional, which cabinet will he work with. Therefore, it goes without gain saying that the personality of the deputy president, His Excellency Rigadi Gachagua, is untenable as far as the presidency is concerned and as far as the cabinet is concerned. One minute more. There has been an argument regarding the companies and Honorable Mutuse has read out the companies which nobody seems to know exactly why these companies were formed. Exactly what was the ulterior motive of forming these companies. But what I wish to point out regarding the companies and what Kenyans should know is that some of the properties under which the deputy president aid stating that these were properties of his late brother, are actually today his properties. Most important is a property known as Kuruwitu Home Resort. This property was actually sold to another company known as Kuruwitu Properties Limited, for Kenya shillings, 250,000. A search of these companies indicate that Kuruwito Properties Limited is owned by Vipigo Beach Resort Limited and John Y. Mavenge. We therefore have to ask ourselves, who is Vipigo Beach Resort Limited? And CR12 indicates that this company is actually owned in shares by Keith Ekino Rigathi, Kevin Gashagwa Rigathi, the estate of the deceased James Deritu Gashagwa. As we were told, these two persons named Keith and Kevin are not executors of the estate of the late Deritu Gashagwa. So if they actually own this company, which owns one of the properties of the deceased purchased at Kenya Shillings, 250 million, then it goes without gain saying that, that in fact the deputy president has an explanation to give regarding this. Finally, we've been told about the press statement he made in Mombasa, and this is the evidence of insubordination. The country was on fire, the country was burning. The president actually finished or completed giving what measures he would take to restore the country. The deputy president went to Mombasa where he gave a statement which in itself was inciting to Kenyans. Casting aspersions on the government, 
casting aspersions on our agencies, and at the end of the day, we have also seen him casting aspersions on the judiciary, which is supposed to be an independent institution. What we are required to do as members of parliament is to prove only one ground. The rest of them may fall or may succeed. But I can assure you, out of the 11 grounds, there is cogent evidence that the deputy president has committed acts inconsistent with his office. Acts which in themselves warrant this house to impeach him today as we go to the vote. As I conclude, I urge the house, let us look at the bigger picture, which is the bigger picture of Kenya as a country. What we are doing is not to try and appease one person. We are trying to do this so that the country is saved. And we have always asked the question, the second in command, who does not work with the first in command and his team? Of what use would that person be to the country? With those very many remarks, I do beg to support this motion. Thank you.